Hi, it's Scott from Grounded Electrical Solutions. Another video here for you. And this one here uh, today is going to be dealing with the differences between a schematic wiring diagram and a PLC ladder logic diagram. They are meant to, to look the same as each other, but let's take a look at some of the, the differences here that we're going to see. So right on the screen, uh, we have a start-stop station for a motor control circuit. So we've got our normally closed stop button, a normally open start, a normally open holding contact, our motor coil, and our overload contact, normally closed. Uh, this would be line one and this would be neutral or line two, and current and voltage would flow through these and energize that coil. And then anything that would break that circuit, whether the stop button is opened or the overload contact is opened, would effectively shut this down. This is like an OR statement here. So when I press this start button here, this motor uh, coil energizes here. And there's an auxiliary set of contacts here that would close that. And then I'm able to take my finger off the start button because these are momentary. And then I would have current flowing down through this path and keeping this, this coil energized and going through there. And that's essentially how, how that works. So when we try to convert this, this diagram that we're so familiar with as electricians and convert that to a PLC program, we end up creating something that looks like this. Now again, it's not exactly the same. And you'll notice that the, the output for the motor coil is at the far end, the right side, and the overload is on the other side of it. And that's, that's fine, it won't really affect anything. It's just in ladder logic, the output has to be the last thing on the rung in order for it to function. If you try to do anything other than that, you're gonna get error messages. In fact, it's pretty hard to write anything there. If you leave that blank, you're gonna get an error message. So it has to always go to an output of some sort there. So we put the over, overload contact here, and you can see that we've set these up just like we saw in the schematic. This was a normally closed, just like the normally closed push button. This is a normally open, like the normally open push button, normally open holding contact, normally closed overload contact. So does that work? Well, let's take a look at um, the instructions that are uh, commonly available. And this again is Do More Designer that we're using. And they've labeled these as normally open and normally closed contacts. They've called it that. And that gets a little confusing. And then they even called, you know, the wire here as wire, not just lines or, you know, branches or anything like that. They've actually called it wire up, wire down, horizontal wiring. And again, that leads us to kind of think that we're back at a, a diagram that looks like this, right? Because we're thinking wire, wire between all of these points. And as an electrician, that's essentially what we would do. These would all be wired terminals and interconnected with actual copper wires. So when we go to a PLC program and it uses some of that same terminology as contacts and wires, we kind of end up thinking that, well, that's how I should set it up. And, and that's exactly what's gonna happen. This is line one and neutral over here and current is gonna flow through here and energize all of this. Well, that is not at all what's happening here. These are simply instructions, and these gray lines are just lines that indicate the order at which these instructions are going to be read. So you gotta kinda think about that. Now, I've configured it like this, and this is how many of my students uh, send their first project into me, because this is essentially the first project that we do. And I always send it back to them and, and ask them to change it. And it's just because of the way that this is configured as far as the instructions go. And it has a lot to do with, with how you would set it up in the field and how you would, you would connect these two devices out in the field. So let's accept the rung edits here. Just made this program and let's run the simulator. And I'll just move this over. I'll get rid of that. And so now we should be able to see both the simulator and the program at the same time here. Here are my 16 digital inputs and my digital outputs over here. 
I'm only using one digital output, Y0, you can see that here, and I'm using three digital inputs, X0, X1, and X2. So I'll put that into run mode. And you can see that I've already got two of my instructions, X0 and X1, two bits, are already um, satisfied because they've got that turquoise highlight behind them, which indicates that the instruction that I've programmed in here has already been met. It's already satisfied. It already sees what it wanted to see out in the field. And if you take a look at my digital inputs here, these are all open. If you want a closure, it has to look something like that. That indicates a closure. So it looks like it, the button's depressed down. That would be a, a closure. So let's think about that as these digital inputs here x0 is open at this point. Well, if I go back to my schematic and my stop button, that was supposed to be a closure. That was supposed to be a closed switch. So let's close that switch and see what happens. Now the instruction's not happy. It's not satisfied that the instruction has not been met. What about x2? That was a normally closed overload contact on the overload block. Let's close that. Oh, now all of a sudden its instruction isn't met. It's not satisfied either. So now with the uh, PLC program the way it's set forth here, if I press X1, my start button, and do it momentarily, so again, thinking like it is a PLC, or not that it's like a PLC, that it's like a, a push button out in the field, I would momentarily press it, and I'd have to push and push again to, to simulate that. It does nothing. The motor doesn't start. So the only way to get this to start is to actually have an open button for the stop and an open contact for the overload. Even though the instructions said that these were normally closed, it just it doesn't jive with how we think of, of contacts out in the field because they really aren't contacts, they're instructions. And it would be better if they actually said in this instruction here and called it a, a different name, maybe go and look for a zero on the field device. I know that's a long name, but essentially that's what, it, what it's looking for. To be satisfied, it actually wants to see a zero or an open state on the field device that it's wired to. Same thing over here, it wants to see an open on that stop push button, which doesn't make sense because it shouldn't be open. Having it normally closed makes it fail safe. So the only way to get this to operate would be to have a, a normally open stop button and a normally open um, overload contact. And that's just not how we, how we conventionally do things um, in the electrical field. So the only way to get this to work is to do that and then to momentarily press X1 and now it works. I wrote a one to here and wrote a one to here and my logic goes through. Okay, so how do I fix this to, to jive with what's out in the field? Well, let's turn the simulator off and then let's change these. So I can right click on that and I can change that instruction. I'm gonna to go to what the program refers to a normally open contact. I don't like that term, but we'll call it that. And then I'll do the exact same thing for the overload. And there you go. So now let's accept those rung edits and start my simulator. And now you can see that nothing went turquoise there. There's no highlighting there, so nothing, nothing is ready to go. Put it into run. And now I'll close X0 to simulate a closed button in the field. And I will close X2 to simulate a normally closed contact at the motor starter. Now those are closed like they would be out in the field and now I'll momentarily press X1 and take my finger off of it and then you can see that it, it runs. So this would be what how you would want to configure a you know a three-wire start-stop station for a, a single motor control and that's what it would end up looking like. And just remember you've got to think about your simulator and operate these these buttons 
like they would be in the field. So if it's supposed to be wired to a normally open button, then leave it open. If it's supposed to be wired to a normally closed button or closed contact, close it. And then that will actually simulate what's actually happening out in the field. So again, this is, this is something that um, you know, is, is unique to PLC programming. It's nice to be able to actually have a simulator I'll like on Do More Designer. But uh, you, know, you just have to wrap your head around the fact that this is not you know, current flowing through this and this is not wiring. It's just simply instructions and what are you trying to tell the, the, the PLC to do with instructions that are coming from the input devices out in the field. And how are those input devices wired? How are they connected? How are they, how are they set up? And what state are they in? So that will help you to determine that. And again, this is kind of the, the building block of a lot of the programs that we're going to be doing in our course uh, coming up here. So I hope that helps. Remember to hit the like and subscribe. And we'll see you on the next video. Thanks a lot.